North America, one in 10 people wear contact lenses, but only one third of this population actually takes good care of their contact lenses. So the optometrist will prescribe you a procedure to clean them, but no one actually follows it. So what then happens is these people get bacteria on their lenses as well as their lens cases. And this leads to eye infections, which can lead to blindness. And this is a completely man-made problem because people start wearing contact lenses because they don't take care of it. That's why you can have these infections that can cause blindness. But if we were able to increase this compliance, which is get people to actually clean their lenses, you can eliminate this disease completely. So that was the motivation behind my project, as to how do we get these people to be more compliant, to take care of their contact lenses. And the reason I'm working on it is because it has the possibility of eradicating blindness from this one source. And I'm using nanotechnology to try to detect bacteria. So if there's bacteria on the lenses or the cases, the case would change color. And then the person, the patient, would know that it's time to throw out their contact lens case. And therefore, they will prevent any infection from happening. In order to do this, I'm actually using gold nanoparticles. Gold nanoparticles are really cool because they have different colors depending on their size. So if you have a really small nanoparticle, you can get a red color. If you have a really big nanoparticle, you can get blue color. Also, if you change the shape of the particles, you get different colors. Not only that, if you have a single particle floating around in solution, it will have a certain color. But if you have a cluster of particles, many particles, then it changes colors. And that's exactly the property that I'm using to detect bacteria. So the idea here is you take these nanoparticles that are much smaller than a bacterium and you cause them to cluster around the bacterium. And when this cluster forms, then you see a color change, like a visually observable color change. So then the user knows, okay, there's a bacterium. Obviously, I shouldn't use it. Otherwise, I would get an infection in my eye. So that's one application. Another application is if someone does get an infection and goes to the doctor's office, and tries to figure out what is actually causing the infection. So we can use the same gold nanoparticles to determine which bacteria is present in the infection. And this is because our gold nanoparticles can bind differently to each bacteria. Like there is surface features on the bacteria that we can explore because these particles are so small. And this different binding leads to a unique color change. It's kind of like how our nose works. Our nose can detect smells because it gets uh, signals from a lot of these receptors that are present in the nose. So that's kind of the same thing that we're doing with the gold nanoparticles. We get a lot of different signals and therefore each bacteria has a unique smell if you want. And visually you can see it. So at the eye doctor, you know which bacteria is causing the infection. Therefore you can prescribe the correct antibiotic. Because if you don't prescribe the correct antibiotic, it can, the infection can actually take much longer to treat and therefore it can even lead to blindness. And that's why it's really important to find out which bacteria is causing the infection. And right now it takes up to seven days to find out which bacteria was causing. Whereas with this method, you can actually do it at the point of care. And right now we're also developing a smartphone app so that you just be able to take a picture of what the color change looks like and identify which bacteria is present. So that's how I envision this technology going forward. So within five minutes, if a patient comes in, let's say we collect a tear sample, add my nanoparticles in, within five minutes, you can actually see which bacteria is present. In order to make this possible, we use different shapes of gold nanoparticles. Specifically, one kind is gold nanostars. And the way we make them is we use these really small gold nanoparticles, which are called gold seeds. and these seeds act as an area where the stars can grow. So you have the seeds in the middle and then the, star, the branches grow off of them. And we can do this in the lab simply by using gold salt, which is similar to like table salt. You get sodium chloride, you can get gold salt, which is gold chloride. You make a solution of that and then you add a reducing agent, which changes it from the salt form to the nanoparticle form. And from there, if you have specific surfactants, which are basically um, molecules that absorb on the surface of the seed, then you can guide how the seed is going to grow. And that's what creates branches and therefore leads to shapes of nanostars. And now these nanostars will aggregate around the bacteria. 
because the nanostars will have a positive charge and the bacteria have a negative charge and we know that opposites attract so the nanoparticles will attract on the bacteria and when all the nanoparticles aggregate around the bacteria it will lead to a color change because of the clustering effect and that's how we can tell okay here's a color change and now we do different bacteria and we see what kind of color change you get and therefore you can obtain a fingerprint and train the system be like okay this color change corresponds to this bacteria this color change corresponds to this bacteria it's kind of like how the pH paper works if you immerse it in solution you get a certain color you know this is the pH same thing so you you add your bacteria solution unknown solution to nanoparticles you get a certain color and you know which bacteria is present and that's how the technology works overall and um, in the future we are also looking into putting these nanoparticles onto surfaces. Right now we're doing everything in solution, but if you can put them on surfaces, it would work the same way. If you have a clean surface, it would have a certain color. If there's bacteria, it would change color completely. So you can imagine in hospitals, uh, keyboards for example, are one of the biggest sources of contamination. So if you put them on keyboards, then you can see when there, it is contaminated with bacteria, and you know when it's time to clean it. And we're also making, trying to make it reversible. So once you clean it, it would restore its color. And then you know, okay, the surface is clean, you can go back to using it. And not just keyboards, but any surface you can start to put this on. One of the neat things about detecting bacteria is that you can detect bacteria that you can't really kill. So there are a lot of technologies that are aiming to kill bacteria, but bacteria are always evolving. So they're always becoming more and more resistant but you'll be able to detect these bacteria and know that, okay, the sample is bad or this substance is bad for you and therefore avoid using it instead of trying to kill it. So we're not trying to kill it, but actually tell you, okay, this is bad, just discard it. That's our goal.